turning then to what have we learned? Let's look at this from a couple points of view, starting with the structural principles. We've seen that there's a number of companies now that are operating successfully as a network. They're operating with a customer facing, in the case of higher, even internal customer facing. With the small groups comes accountability, and it also eliminates handoffs that often are uh, created as bottlenecks through a traditional hierarchy. We've also seen that it is possible to do some purpose alignment with autonomy. This is the tension between the two, such that there is some control between the decisions that are being made and the overall organization uh, mission and purpose itself. These, this is done in a number of cases and is done with line of sight of why that particular individual or group's work impacts others in the organization. We've also seen how they're easily reconfigured for growth and change, in which case there is a change built in to the operating policy itself of how the structures within the network can change over time to not only be more efficient, but also to meet changing needs in the environment itself. Okay. Looking forward then for the operating principles. A key operating principles is distributed decision-making. And the decision-making is at the customer interface, which is often where the problems arise, such that there is a focus then continuously on customer needs and desires and how to bring that into the organization and take action on it. These companies also have great transparency and direct communication, oftentimes through the direct communication of the network itself or possibly in the shadow network operating in conjunction with the hierarchy itself. Looking forward then, in another operating principles is to see elements of effectuation or the entrepreneurial spirit in many of these organizations, in which case they continue to operate with some entrepreneurial thinking and they don't get bogged down in the thinking that often gets uh, locked into the control of a traditional hierarchy. There's also a focus from uh, effectuation to focus on what you can control and influence and not worry about what you can't control and influence. It's basically a action orientation, action orientation, but that action continues to focus on available resources or the means. This is a key difference between effectuation and causation. Causation looks at goals and figures out what resources are needed to meet those goals, the effectuation flips, flips that around like entrepreneurs will do. They look at the resources they have available to them, which are the means, including the relationships they have with possible partner organizations, and then they take action toward goals that they can reach from those means. So it's really flipping around the resource goal direction. They also, as we've seen, do take risks if the loss is affordable. In some cases, explicit within their principles, they use that. But again, that gets back to effectuation. There's also a tendency to experiment and learn. But again, it's because there is focus at the individual work units themselves, even if they're a staff work unit, to continue to serve their customers, whether external or internal customers, better. So there is a consistent pressure to keep doing better. There's also forming of partnerships to extend the available resources such that they aren't limiting themselves just to what they have, nor are they limiting themselves to fighting for boundary conflicts. They're looking for those win-win situations, not only internally, but externally. So this then is a key alternative to causation thinking. The question then comes is, if an entrepreneurial company is built on effectuation, 
why as they grow as it grows do they shift over to a causation point of view and when we talk later uh, today in the next presentation we're going to get more into the reason behind that and it really centers down that organizations are too often built for control not for work and that has a ripple effect on many many other aspects of how they organize and operate summary then what are the principles that have come out of from what we've seen from some of these other companies in particular what are the structural principles that we've seen as alternatives to a traditional hierarchy we've seen that companies can operate very large companies can operate as small networked operating units with a customer facing throughout the organization we've seen organizations that are successfully doing that. We've seen them be able to purposely align across the organization, sometimes formally, sometimes informally. We've seen a number of operating principles, in particular, how to do distributed decision making at the customer interfaces, both the internal and external customer interfaces, that is possible in which case you're getting away from the control that's embedded in the traditional hierarchy. We've seen great transparency and open communication because you've eliminated much of the filtering and uh, passing back and forth of information, not necessarily by the most direct route, but through the hierarchy itself. And to a large extent, when you look at these companies, there's great entrepreneurship spirit. The people have excitement for what they're doing because they are in control. We talked yesterday about resistance. Resistance often comes not from resistance against change, but resistance against being in control. To the extent that we put these operating principles and structure in place, you're actually releasing people and giving them control over what they do. You're giving them more control over the types of change and what changes than would be normally done in a traditional hierarchy, such that you're replacing resistance with giving them control itself. Moving forward then, okay, we're talking about principle-driven change. We're rethinking change itself within the context of organizations and how there is an interrelationship then between the structure of an organization and how it operates and how change has to be implemented within that structure itself. Yesterday, we talked about the foundation of why we need to rethink change. In this presentation, we focused more on the the changes that we've seen that are possible in alternate structures. We've seen how the, some of these companies have closed that gap and have seen a new vision for the way they operate. Later today, we're gonna to be talking more about change as a business model. This is principle driven action in which case, as you uh, decentralize your operations, you decentralize your control, replacing that control would be principles of how to guide action. And then tomorrow, we're gonna be talking more details about how this actually is implemented in an organization and making transitions to that type of organization. This brings me to the conclusion of exploring alternatives